Chemical sedimentary rocks are made out of minerals that grew as crystals precipitating out of water. So we're looking at water that contains dissolved minerals, and conditions have changed for whatever reason, and those minerals that are dissolved begin to recrystallize from that water. When identifying chemical sedimentary rocks, the first property that we have to look at is texture. There are two different textures. The first one we're going to look at is microcrystalline. When we're holding a microcrystalline rock, we will see that the crystals making it up are too small to be identified. So when we hold a microcrystalline rock, we see that the light just kind of goes across it. It feels really smooth. We can't identify any of the individual crystals within the rock. Now a question that may come up as you are looking at sedimentary rocks is how do I tell the difference between a microcrystalline chemical rock and a well-sorted plastic rock that's only made of mud-sized grains because both of them feel very smooth to the finger. When we look at the chemical sedimentary rock, we will see that there's no real structure to it whatsoever. It's just one big massive lump very solid held together. Whereas when we look at the plastic sedimentary rock, we may see that one side is kind of massive, really smooth, not much structure to it, but when we look at one of the other sides, we're able to see layering or stacking of the sediment over time, giving structure to this rock, which is a plastic property that we look at in sedimentary rocks. So if you don't see any layering or stacking within the rock, and it's very fine grained and smooth, you should think microcrystalline chemical rock is what you're holding in your hand. The second texture that we look at and identify is crystalline. And in a crystalline rock, we're looking at large crystals that look like they are glittering, light is bouncing off them, or it kind of looks like what we describe as paper mache. So for the first one with the glittering light, I hold this rock and you can see right away this is drastically different than the microcrystalline where light just kind of goes across it. It's very smooth on the surface. Here we can see the crystals are sticking out. They're more, there's more texture to the surface and then also that light bouncing off of the surface of the rock shows us individual crystals very large that we can see with the naked eye. For the paper mache look, we have this rock and instead of light really bouncing off of it. This time we see, just like paper mache, pieces that look like they're stuck on the surface of the rock. These are individual crystals, again large enough to see. Uh, so when we look at crystalline texture, look for either the paper mache look or the glittering light coming off of the surface. The second property that we must identify for chemical sedimentary rocks is mineral composition. And when we're looking at mineral composition, the great thing is that the minerals that make up chemical rocks that we will see all have one distinguishing characteristic that the other minerals do not or cannot do. So for instance, quartz, the first one on the list, is the only mineral hard enough to scratch glass. Calcite, the second on the list, is the only mineral that will effervesce or fizz vigorously when hydrochloric acid is put on the surface of the rock. Dolomite has to be powdered to effervesce. Halite will taste like salt, which do not just start licking the rocks. Be sure to ask your instructor and be certain that they are confident that you can lick this rock before you try doing that. And the last mineral at the bottom, gypsum, is the only one soft enough to be scratched with your fingernail. So if I pull these rocks all together, into our screen here. We start again with quartz. Quartz is the only of the minerals listed that is hard enough to scratch glass. So when I drag it across the surface we get a nice deep scratch mark on the glass. If I try that with one of the chemical sedimentary rocks that has a different mineral, I put it on the surface, I drag it across, and where I dragged it we have no mark whatsoever. Because again, quartz is the only rock hard enough to scratch glass. The second mineral that was on our list is calcite. And again, if your chemical sedimentary rock contains calcite, that's the only 
mineral that will react vigorously with the hydrochloric acid. The chemical rock containing dolomite will first need to be powdered, so we take the metal nail and we gouge it into the surface of the rock bearing dolomite, and when we put acid where we made the powder, the reaction is not nearly as vigorous, but we do get some bubbling or fizzing, effervescing reaction with that acid. The rock salt, again, is the only one that you should lick if you choose to do so, and your instructor tells you it is safe to do so. But when we put it to our tongue, we can tell, yes, very salty, made out of halite. The last mineral that we had on the list is gypsum, and again, this is the only one soft enough that if you take your fingernail, you can scratch the surface. You can see the powder of it there on my finger. Uh, because the mineral gypsum is the only one on the list that's soft enough to scratch with our fingernails. These are the properties that we will use to identify chemical sedimentary rocks.